This is Hiroja Shaim, your host of Satoshi's Treasure Hunters, and this is the weekly hunt update for September 11th through September 20th, as we do both the Satoshi's Treasure update and the Tezo Mini. So there's been some drama, um, we'll get into it, with both hunts, both the Tezo Mini hunt and the Satoshi's Treasure hunt. Um, for the most part, it's been just pretty much quiet on the Western Front. There's been a maybe a couple keys solve on the Satoshi side, but for the most part, because there hasn't been a new clue drop, um, and there hasn't been any really progress on the Tezo mini hunt, and we'll get into why that is, um, it's been kind of like slow, and it's it's a little annoying. It's just, you know, rapid fire here, rapid fire, come on, rapid fire. So um, let's just kind of get into it. Okay, so here is the main site. We still have no claim about the Earth Key. Uh, there is an update on the Zero Knowledge Key. What happened was... The Zero Knowledge Keys for the Snark Key have been released to the three winners. The challenging puzzles from Coinless, thanks to everyone who participated. So those keys, uh, which were, oops, considered maybe um, no longer available, have become available to those prize winners. And if you recall from the clue, don't be snarky, uh, three keys and an additional $70,000 be rewarded to the hunters who solved the puzzle. Uh, we knew one key was released. Now that we know the other two have been released. Okay. And then let's see, the checkerboard key, again, unsure of the uh, private clan claimed that they solved the checkerboard key and possibly the earth key. But again, they don't have to demonstrate proof, but since the, the game makers have switched from available to expired, we have no idea if this, this these clues have been found or not unless it's been publicly disclosed. Okay, so the United key, no one's publicly disclosed that they found that. Same with the ladder key. The hidden key has been found. And the Kanthaka key, um, I haven't heard anyone stating that they've been made that, um, they found that. So there's the Kathana key, one. The ladder key, two. The United key, three. Possibly the fourth key, uh, checker key is, uh, out there and the earth key now um the hackathon key which is the uh, cheese wizard key that has ended they have submissions available uh, i'm sure pretty soon we'll find out uh who has uh, earned that key but as of now um it was August 1st to September 15th, so that has ended. We'll see who uh, is going to win the prize. Looks like this right here, the cheese dial, uh, might be the winner, but again, um, that's being determined by the game makers. Okay, so the Tezo found the Tezo mini hunt. Um, again, it's 14 key splits are required to resemble the Tezo's wallet with 5,000 XTZ, which is trading at a dollar a little bit more USD. The first 10 can be found at and around the following GPS coordinates. Uh, I talked about that with the mini hunt, where those GPS coordinates are. Uh, let's click on this and go to the paste, because this is important. This is part of the kind of the drama going on with the hunt. So, <clears throat> Let's read this message again. So, enter Satoshi's treasure Tezos, a second hunt with a prize of 1 million Tezos or Tezis. This full scale hunt is currently under development and will provide an innovative new type of game, another world's first global multiplayer hunt based on a system of incentive smart contracts. However, smart contracts can be one of the most potent foot guns known to man. So while intricacies of the full scale hunt are meticulously tuned, we put together a global mini hunt to satisfy everyone's treasure hunting needs um, in the meantime. 
The 14 key splits are required to resemble the Tezos wallets with 5000 XTZs in it. The first 10 can be found at or around the following GPS coordinates. As usual, you won't need to go anywhere dangerous to find the keys, they're mostly hidden in plain sight, so to speak. Uh, for the remaining splits, watch the space or space itself, which is the um, Blockstream satellite. So the thing that's missing here that was not part of the message is going to the Satoshi's Treasure website. And that caused some problems. And the reason why it caused problems is that uh, the GPS stickers. Okay, well, we'll get into the stickers for a moment. Uh, the other four keys uh, were given to people. And this is the thing we talked about this during the mini hunt. They haven't been disclosed publicly, so there's been a wait on these four keys for being released. Don't know if there's a particular day they're going to do it all at once. Or what's going on with it but that's why that this particular hunt hasn't been solved yet uh, people have been pretty much been able to go to these gps locations and obtain the particular keys but the issue has been okay so the issue was with the stickers in the in the tezo hunt is that the the people that joined the hunt that weren't already part of the Satoshi's treasure hunt didn't know the rules and because they weren't guided to the website and they didn't know the rules some people started taking the stickers off and this is understandable because at these locations that these gps locations were uh, there were multiple stickers at the same location so if i was new to the game i knew this was a hunt for money and there's multiple stickers i personally would assume Oh, since I'm the first person here to take the sticker down, not to leave it up for the next hunter to follow behind me and try to scan and, you know, they're just behind me in the race or whatever. Um, but that wasn't the case. And so a lot of these GPS locations, these stickers were getting taken down and it caused some drama in the, uh, both of the, the Toshi's, uh, uh, to the Tezos mini hunt telegram as well as the Satoshi site about this because one they weren't guided to uh, as you can see from the message to the website to get the roles like they can't even know if they're even able to participate because of the nature of smart contracts and um, tokens and things of that nature they're in affiliations with uh, Tezos or things like that so they don't know the rules um, some people are like, oh, it's kind of obvious that you're not supposed to pull the stickers down, but it wouldn't be obvious to me. If there were multiple stickers, I would be thinking like it's a flyer, like you see for job hunts or, uh, those really small businesses that do like cleanups and, or dog walking or something like that, or babysitter, where you take the little phone number, or the little tab and pull it. Uh, instead of just, you know, maybe taking a picture or, you know, back in the day, writing the number down so someone else behind, you know, f can come behind you and get and get the information from the ad. I would think that you're just supposed to take take the sticker and you just happen to be the first person there. Um, but that wasn't the case. And so it caused a bit of drama. It's, these stickers were put back by once the um, people knew that the rules were you weren't supposed to take the stickers they put it back but again this caused this caused a communication issue and this is on the part of the game makers they didn't guide them to the website so they know the rules not take the stickers down and for people to get upset or call foul, foul play um so you can always go to the um Satoshi's Treasure Telegram, and you can follow um, the posts are still there. They're not deleted. Uh, and follow the drama for yourself. Uh, there were some personal interactions. I'm, I'm not going to get into that aspect of it, but I think the key component coming back is, again, the game makers have a significant, huge communication issue. And I don't know why at this point in, we're almost six months into the game of Satoshi's Treasure, uh, the first couple weeks of the Tesla mini hunt and the future second hunt that they have not resolved this They don't have a communication director. Everyone's on the same board 
this this should be the full time job of somebody of a couple somebody's where this is the only thing they're doing they're doing the communications and the layouts of this game they're not going to conferences they're not going to raise funds this is it they run the game and they're giving the ball and they're calling the plays you know calling the audibles they have a play playbook and they're going step by step by step and it, it just seems a little haphazard and very techy where you just throw throw things in the, the pot throw the spaghetti against the wall to see if it works you know if it's done or not and that stuff that's annoying that stuff is not flying anymore people are getting like there's templates there's ways to go about this some of their old school business ways some are new business ways some are kind of a mix of both but there are ways to be conducting these games conducting business and you're not kind of doing it uh for example again this right here the disclosure by one of the individuals having received the key like within the first couple days of you know you know getting it that they weren't actually supposed to disclose it you know uh, maybe that should have been in the message saying hey this is part of the game you're one of our investors uh, please don't disclose it into X amount of days it's very important for the purpose of this game just very clear maybe like an email beforehand a phone call before the package gets there you, you track the packages packages have had tracking numbers for decades now uh, you know you get the alert when it gets there you contact email the person contact the person reiterate and emphasize um, so there's that um, what else okay so we talk with you so there's been issues about these business cards here So the business cards are a hidden key along with the art tour key, which I, I don't think the art tour key is going to get solved. But the business card keys are anywhere from 13 to 15 cards that people that are part of the game, the game makers have, in which you meet them either at conferences or designated locations. They give you this card and you'll um, basically assemble all the rest of the 15 cards and you'll be able to unlock that particular key and it's called the business card key now some people are promised very early in the game by because they message the game makers and you had communications and we're supposed to get these cards now there's been a couple people that were sent these cards but didn't receive it because something happened in the mail but now they're going to get these cards and it's going to be sent to them and there's going to be tracking numbers and things of that nature and again this this again goes back to just fundamental basics like tying your goddamn shoes or buckling your belt like some basic home training stuff that like why would you send out a very important package without some tracking numbers attached to it that would be something that should have occurred uh, maybe an insurance attached to it so you can get something back from it um that wasn't done with these first set of packages that somehow got lost in the mail uh but now those people that were promised these cards are going to receive it through the mail and if you go to different conferences and these game makers make themselves aware of their presence, you can obtain these particular cards. Um, again, there might have been a manufacturing issue when it comes to these cards because they have been passing them out to different conferences and they could have ran out. I personally think with a game that they were trying to do with the price level, I would think they would have these enough of these cards made pre-made beforehand just kind of go overrun and see it's better to have something and not use it and then to have a need for it and be without but again um just these are the same criticisms that, um, a lot of people have been making i've been making about this game just like these really fundamental basics that they're not getting nailed down at yesterday uh, Eric Belzer, the pretty much the, the main spokesperson for the game makers, stated that he's going to do an AMA. He knows the DLive guys, and he's going to answer some questions that have been many people have been harping on about the game. The fact that um, there's significant communication errors on the part of the game makers. 
the, the clues are not dropping as fast as they should be for a game that's supposed to be done for a year. The fact that he disclosed that they're working on hard clues, which is very interesting for the fact that a game that's supposed to have a million dollar USD and BTC prize money, that they don't have all these clues already done. I mean, they should have had like a thousand clues created with a few extra for any snafus, weather implements, uh, this, this style clue is not working, so we'll just do this different type of style or different levels already created prior to the release of this game. It seems like they are making the clues up as they go along. Like they had like a, a cache of clues. For some reason, they thought that was going to take a while for people to do. And then they kind of ran out of whatever that cache was. And it's been a very slow go. Um, the other thing is that they didn't think people were going to be as smart enough to solve these clues. And that's not how game makers work. You always think that someone is at the same level of gameplay because you're making a game that you would enjoy to play. So there's going to be a lot more people like yourself or smarter. And then you adjust maybe a little bit downward for like kids or family roles or something like that. So everybody can play depending on the nature of the game. Some cases you can't do that and you, you'd be like, this is for adults. And you just have to play at this level. If you're someone younger or, or, or inexperienced, you're going to have to kind of figure it out. Here are the very clear, crystal clear rules. So you can figure it out and play at the adult level or at this particular skill level. And so that's very discerning as well. The other thing is the inconsistency is about the proof of funds. Eric Meltzer is insistent that providing a proof of funds will not cause people to come play the game and that is significant bullshit because other crypto puzzles that have been created in this space with the proof of funds people have in fact been trying to solve these puzzles it took a very long time for the legends of Soshi nakamoto a uh, one flame um six six uh to be solved because it was a difficult puzzle it just was it, it required some new eyes, some skill sets, th things of that nature for the right people to actually look at the puzzle and figure it out. People were just henpecking the hell out of that particular puzzle to get, obtain the prize. So you can't say there wasn't an interest. Um, same thing with the Monero prize. People were hacking away at that particular puzzle prize. And there's been other ones that have been solved. Like the 310 BTC puzzle was solved fairly quickly. And I think the last bit of the broken up prizes that were solved, uh, the uh, the Pineapple Fund has this arcade game with the Neo, uh, Neon District where there's different puzzles and prizes where people go and, you know, pick up these prizes with because there's proof of funds. Bounty hunts and the, the development of... Um, you know, uh, computer space where people find vulnerabilities within different programs and receive a bounty. Ever since Apple put up that million dollar prize for their bounties, they've gotten so many disclosures because people have either been sitting on them, started really looking at it, they've been incentivized to disclose these vulnerabilities to Apple and receive the funds. Uh, is like the lotto when the lotto goes jumps up up to a certain amount I think it's like 125 or 150 you start seeing like an influx of people there's like a certain amount where you start seeing people that just you know either really casual players or like all for the funsies of it put down two dollars two dollars and, and try to get the you know the powerball parties uh but there's a proof of funds there's a proof that this is the amount that you're going to receive if you win the prize and so the fact that there's not a proof of funds would incentivize people, particularly in this space, where it's trust but verify, yeah. They should sign a message, send it out. This is the public address. This is us signing the, our cryptographic key here that we control this particular Bitcoin address. And if you win the bounty, you get this particular address. Um, my thing is with the proof of funds is I'm concerned of whether or not there's actually at the time of the sharding um, the equivalent of 1 million USD at the time because there's been, you know, and I have a link, I'll put it back in the show notes, of what the proof of funds could be from anywhere as low as 190 to as high as 300 Bitcoin depending on when they split 
the the uh, keys for the for the uh, when they sharded the keys for the the Bitcoin address. Uh, they could have tokenized it where they can just put like one Bitcoin and tokenize it and be like, okay, you solved the game and you've got a access to this address you're moving the funds we see that you can, we can message each other and now you, you're going to receive your at the designated address the the equivalent at whatever the game is solved of million usd which would be less bitcoin than that of what many people perceive or believe to be from the nature of the game of the sharding of what uh, the Bitcoin address could be, uh, the the Bitcoin amount could be because as we progress further, you know, Bitcoin has gone up and down ten thousand whatever, and it's supposed to take a year. Even if it stays around ten thousand um, Bitcoin, that price that's the stability. Let's see, um, we just do the minimum of one hundred and ninety Bitcoin times 10,000, that's a $1.9 million. So almost $2 million. Not to mention, depending on when it was sharded, if there's any Bitcoin forks or, or airdrops or things of that nature, which I talked about, um, and I'll have a link in the show notes, or I should say at the end of the video, about uh, the Bitcoin prize, about how you can take, you know, any, like, Bitcoin airdrops or any um, Bitcoin forks, whatever value they could potentially have that has happened since the sharding and put that address in, and, and set it aside and maybe use that to pay for this or that or whatever, or give out prize money and because it, it's still money on the table, really, if you think about it. And there's ways to do it without um, exposing your privacy, if you will, in that nature. And if it goes as high as 300, you know, that's, you know, that's $3 million, just triple of what, you know, the game started out. And that, so that's significant. That's very significant. It, it needs to be clear and made. And it shouldn't take months. This is not a very difficult thing to do. Signing a Bitcoin address is something very basic. There's so many tutorials on how to do it, how to sign your Bitcoin address so people know that you have ownership or proof of funds of a particular address for whatever cause it may be, be for like a business purpose, a personal purpose, a prize purpose for this case or in previous cases. So that's just very fundamentally weird. And for this space, without the proof of funds, there's a lot of people that are just not going to jump in. They're going to put this on the back burner. Many people that are very skilled have said this is on the back burner. They're keeping their eye on it. They're coming in and out, solving whatever puzzles they need to, um, collecting whatever. There's no sense of urgency. But the moment those proof of funds are put up and it's like 190 Bitcoin or between that 190, 300 Bitcoin, you're going to see a lot of um, activity. You're going to see a lot more of those private clans that have been silent, running deep be a little bit more active, maybe a little bit more vocal, maybe start recruiting people. You might see some Twitter spear stuff. And you're going to start seeing more clans form. I think you're going to see some better, more skilled clans with very hardcore developers and stuff like that. And it'll be an interesting dynamic change and shift of the game. Um, and then you're going to see a key market, I think, form with the expired keys for any new clans that are forming that don't have... Uh, any of these keys that have been expired, you can start seeing people selling it for whatever price. I think with some of these keys have been um, collected, uh, the the price market would probably be pretty low this early on, just because so many might have those GPS coordinate ones or things of that nature. It would require like a very rare one towards the end that might hold on to it, like one of these snarky keys or hackathon keys or any of those other keys for people to be, you know, be able to get profit, I think, extensively. But we'll see. I mean, Eric Meltzer promised a blog post on how to solve for the, um, the hunter key, I think it was, where you had to find the um, three agents and only two of them were um, not found. Only one of them was found. So that didn't happen and these business card things have been a month on saga so yeah 
Um, and I understand that they, these um, game makers, you know, private, primitive interest is their business, their marketing, they're out there hustling, doing a business. But, and they have, you know, personal lives, but no one cares about your personal life and nobody cares about your business really. They only care about the game, their product, if you will. And the product is not doing very well. Um, praising them getting their hustle on and getting the Tezo Foundation to pump some funds into the to the second hunt and probably use it for the Toshi's treasure hunt. Um, they're supposed to be working with MIT to get develop more clues. Um, they're getting out there, I guess, getting their marketing thing going on. They have this relationship with CoinList and Binance, so you know, kudos for the you know the the achievements that they receive for their business end. But for their product, it, it, it needs to be better. It, they need to do better. They need to have a stronger communication. They have a need to have a strong social media presence, both in the Telegram chat um, and on Twitter, which seems to be the primary forms of communication. Um, maybe a blog post to, you know, update, you know, the clarity of the game, anything of that nature to make the communication better and get and get these damn clues out. Drop 10 at a time. It's fine if you drop 10 at a time. It could be a mixture of geolocations, hackathons, and crypto or code breaking puzzles, different types of style of, of puzzles out there. That's not going to break the game. It will allow people to tamper down, try to solve these keys, move on, progress, things of that nature. 